Let's face it, we all have a dream of being super wealthy one day. That's why we watch this show, that's why we watch this channel, and that's why we invest in shares, or at least you've got some decent unit trusts, maybe you've got a retirement annuity. Some people are terribly in intuitive about these sorts of things, though, and some people are a bit creative. Some people form investment clubs. We've got three members of an investment club this evening to join us, and we're going to be talking about fund sizes, mandates, and returns, and investment clubs can be a great way to encourage and introduce ordinary folk people like you and me to the market. This is Tonight, I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight, I'm joined by members of the High Gain Investment Club to tell us how they did it, how they decided to start the club, and how they run it. And perhaps you can get some tips as to how you can get a couple of mates together of an evening, once or twice a month, discuss shares and put some money into a pot and buy them as a collective using your experience. Uh, the High Gain Investment Club is made up of tech geeks, it's made up of medical doctors, it's made up of retired individuals who, who worked in financial positions in companies and sales directors so professional guys sitting in the high gain investment club because you you're the chairman of, of the high gain investment club was it always the high gain investment club or has it evolved over time well it has evolved over time we started uh, what year around about 1984 1984 that's okay. when the original seeds were planted in terms of getting together and actually investing it was a group of friends sitting around saying we waste a lot of money, so let's take a little bit of the waste and put it into something worthwhile. And, and that's how, how we many, started. How many people in the beginning? Initially we had about eight. Okay, eight at the beginning. How many of those eight are still involved? All eight. All eight? Okay, so you haven't fallen out that significantly no. over time. How big is the club now then? Ten members. Okay, so it's been massively exclusive. What did you have to do to get the other two members in? Well, they came to us, <laughs> begging, <laughs> yes, to join our club. Okay. Um, uh, uh, when, when you started out, though, it was fairly simple, I suppose. You put in a couple of hundred rand a month. Um, uh, ten rand. Pardon? When we started, started out, it was ten rand. You each put in ten rand a month. Ten rand. <laughs> okay, so in 1984, money, ten rand a month. Um, do you remember the first share you bought? Well, when we started out, we basically didn't have enough to buy shares. Okay. So it was an aggregation of funds. So we started out just putting the money into the bank. When we had enough, we then decided to buy a couple of unit trusts. When we had enough money thereafter, we decided, right, let's abandon the unit trusts and now start picking our own stock. So eight, 1984, you start with money in the bank and then into the unit trusts. By what year do you start investing in shares? 1990. 1990, we had started buying shares. Okay, so it took you six years to mm. build up a sufficient capital, capital base yeah. in order to buy the shares. Correct. What, do you remember the size of the nest egg in those days, Vijay? The first balance sheet was about 34,000. Okay, but that was a substantial amount of money, wasn't yes. it? Yes. I mean, okay, mm. okay so, so Vijay, you start with 34,000 Rand. Mm. What were the first shares you bought? Uh, Joel. Joel, what is that? A mining company. Coal mining, mining company. Coal mining company, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Joel was there. What else? And Keely, a granite company. Granite the cheapest. Company. Did you make any money we out of this? We clearly knew our way around. Uh, Keely, we lost some money, and Joel sort of, it was a break even situation mm -hmm. that time. What's the first one you made some money out of? I think Carson's was uh, our biggest. You're talking about companies that are so far <laughs> beyond my life experience, <laughs> um, because this is 20 years, uh, 25 years ago now. Yeah. Uh, so and Dimension about. Data. I think Dimension Data was one of the uh, when it. Uh, I think the shares yeah, came on, and you know we, we start. That's when we started really making. Uh, the thing inroads into mm. making profits. profits. Okay, so Dimension Data, that was the big IT boom stock, mm. of course. Did Correct. you ride it up to that 70 Rand London listing price? Yeah. Did you sell at that point? Did you agree? Sit yes. around the table? Yes. We, did. Okay. we made some good money on Dimension Data. But, but was that the first big breakthrough you had um, in before terms of was a Carson's. Carson's. Okay, Carson's, Carson's, Carson's what did Carson's do? They were a pharmaceutical company in the black uh, hair care market at the time. Okay, so they were a black like me sort of company, um, and Carson's, which no longer exists, or it's they been a month. Yeah, no, yeah. they liquidated yeah. after that. We okay. fortunately took profits, and then we, 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 we took profits and left our original investment in the share, and then it took a dive, so we lost our original investment, but it was a, what, probably a 10 bagger in terms of uh, shares, so. Um, how does the process work? How often do you meet? We religiously meet on a monthly basis on um, each individual's uh, house. Um, it's it's a it's, it's a rotational basis. So we take turns. We meet at each other's house more to meet up, and then we discuss the investments. Okay. Uh, and make decisions based on 
whatever we come forward with any opportunities. But, but the, the, the process, VJ, then, is it one, is the process social or is the process business? One hour business, more, it's basically strategic talking of investments. Okay, because I was once invited to a ladies' investment club. Oh. These ladies tended to drink wine. But they drank the wine first and then started discussing no, the shares no. later on no, in the no, evening. No. We have rules. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very clear rules. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, but you're restricted to an hour. Anything you can't sort out at an hour, what happens? Then it basically gets taken over to the next month's meeting. We, well, we, we, we try and keep it strictly an hour, but sometimes it runs into a little longer if there's you know, pertinent issues that need to be addressed there and then. What's the biggest fight, Prakash, you guys have ever had? Ah. There's so many of them, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's what changed our investment strategy. I think initially we all wanted to make decisions. Uh, in the end, I think we realized that everybody cannot make the decisions. We all gave input, and in the end, one person makes the final decision. Is that, Good or bad? Is, is that the role of the chairman? No. no. Okay. No. So who, who is then Sh the chief Sh investment officer? Shabir. Okay. So Shabir is the, is the mm -hmm. chief investment mm -hmm. officer ultimately. Uh, and you've all agreed then. You've got, have, you, have you got like heads of agreement in terms of the structure of this thing? Because uh, it's got to be a, a, a formal business. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a registered company. Okay. Because that's important, but isn't it? Because yes. up until a point where you had 34,000 Rand, which in 1990 money was a lot of money. Very true. Did you have the structure in place back then? Or did you suddenly we wake up one day and go, we need to structure this more? No. At that point in 1990, we had a close corporation. Okay. That was formed. And because of eight members, it was sufficient for us and in terms of a legal entity. All right. But when the other two gentlemen came along, then we said, no, let gentlemen, we should go and register a company. All right. So, so you're, 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 into a company. you're a tax-paying, legitimate enterprise, Correct. which still relies then on monthly contributions from all your members. Correct. Okay. How big are the contributions nowadays? We okay. yeah. Yeah. Very little. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing. We yeah. made no time. bearing on the growth in the end. Yeah. We found that after, I think we, we started analyzing the data, we realized that uh, contributions made no difference. Uh, I think we, whenever we needed additional funds, we all put in, but generally we started use, using the different tools, different uh, what gearing and things yeah. of that nature. And so in terms of, of, of scale, we actually found that contributing actually has no impact in terms of the financial returns. So we abandoned the idea of contributions. If there's a need for cash to come into the organization, we'll make an ad or contribution of whatever number is comfortable for every member. Um, however, in, in terms of a monthly commitment, there is none now. Okay. We started with a 10 Rand way back when, and our final contributions were 1,000 Rand a couple of years ago. And What is the value of the portfolio then? 17 million at the moment. 17 million Rand? Yes. Are you all equal partners in equal the 17? Equal in everything. Every way. Okay, so the guys who came in later bought in yes. and, you, and you did the calculations and Correct. they they came in and they, and they bought in. This 17 million mm. is then compounding, but Correct. you're also using more complex financial instruments, uh, as you suggested a moment ago, Prakash, in order to, to get the maximum benefit out of the 17 million. Correct, yeah. I think uh, Shabir looks at various tools. Um, he's, he's the head honch on in terms of all the investment strategies. Uh, but generally what happens is that uh, he uses the various tools and analyzes. He looks at your P ratios. He looks at, he looks at comp analyzing companies and things of that nature and then uses that to see what opportunities are there. And each, yeah. each member gives his own input based in the industry that they're all working in. Yeah. Uh, Can I come in mm -hmm. in terms of... Basically, every member has to contribute. So we all do our readings and follow the markets mm -hmm. and understand. And we have our own preferences in terms of what sectors we enjoy and what stock picks we'd like to make. So at the meeting, we would then present that. Everybody gives some input, and then there's a decision that needs to be made. So the investment guys who run a portfolio, because we've actually structured different portfolios. So Shabir runs one portfolio, okay. Dr. Jeevan runs another, and they basically then make the ultimate decision in terms of what am I going to do this month. Uh, do you draw income from this at all? No, no. at this point. In okay, time. so you, you've each got a stake in this thing of 1.7 million. At some point, somebody's going to want to withdraw. 
um, uh, fr from the fund or tragically, I mean, we all have a limited yes. life expectancy. <laughs> um, uh, uh, you guys aren't as young as you used to be in 1984 when you started. Um, there is an inevitability that comes to the conclusion uh, of an investment strategy. Um, how do you extricate yourselves from this? Should you require, say, suddenly you need life-saving surgery, for example, and you need two million rand? you take your money out? I mean, you've got provision for this. We, we, yeah, we've basically had a memorandum of a, uh, incorporation that actually covers all okay. of those. So withdrawals is handled in a certain way. We have a formula that everybody's agreed to. So the computation is fairly straightforward. We value the portfolio at that point in time. There are certain costs that have to be accounted for, so those come off as a deduction. The net amount is there available for you to pull out whenever you when want. When you guys to. writing the book? Because, I mean, everybody should be running investment clubs. Groups of eight, ten friends should be running investment clubs. But it turns into, unfortunately, a fight in many cases. You guys seem to have structured it in such a way, and you've got a blueprint for success on this. BJ, when you're writing the book, come on, you're the retired guy at the table. No, no, the Dr. Guni. Guni Dr. Guni. He loves he that. <laughs> he wants, he loves legacies and all that. But he must write, he, he he wants he must to write, write the, book. the book because it would be a South African bestseller. How we started an investment <laughs> club. Uh, please tell Guni to write the book. Oh. Give, give me a sense, please, of the strategies that you employ. Because you don't go and take the top 40. You don't play um, in, you, you don't play in the big leagues here. You got, no. you got a handful Look, of shares. Correct. It's... I think we were quite fortunate, or I don't know what you want to call it, but it was sector picking and looking at the quality of the share and I think also the management of the companies that we were going to invest. I mean, besides the other, of the P ratios yeah, of course, the and all the financial that. dynamics, but you, but you rely on management teams, you rely, rely on sectors. Yes. Your biggest holding is probably in EOH. Yes. And you're still holding EOH? Correct past three years we've been holding. You've we done, you've it's, done a ten, well. it's another 10 beggar. Uh, but but well, you've not been that great on Omnia. Eh? Uh, yeah. No, we bailed. Uh, we we bailed, bailed, bailed on Omnia. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> the recent results of Omnia weren't spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Omnia you're out of. You've recently added Standard Bank and Discovery. Yes, but we were in Discovery. Okay. Also, on, we bought it three, four years ago. Also in the 30 or 40, 20, 30 uh, price range. We sold it at about 90 because we thought it ran out of steam and then... Came down to 80 and you uh, bought again? Yes. Now we're back into that. If these guys don't write a book, somebody's going to have to. What an extraordinary, extraordinary story of a group of friends who in 1984 got together with minuscule amounts of money, the little bit they could afford, and gradually built up a cash pile, went into unit trusts, grew the value of the capital, had 34,000 Rand in 1990, and then started buying particular shares, shares that have disappeared into the mists of time. But Vijay, back us. And uh, Prakash, thanks very much for coming through and uh, telling us all about the high gain investment club from minuscule uh, contributions of 10 rand each each individual in this particular uh, arrangement is worth 1.7 million rand from a club from a hobby from a week what once a week or once a month once, once a, a month. month once a month one hour of their time and no more capital is being contributed to this it's absolutely fascinating. Go back and watch it on YouTube. Uh, you'll be able to see this, get the insights, get the strategies, and we'll get Dr. Gooney to write the book. Thank you for joining us, and it's nice to have you with us as, uh, this evening as well. Thank you for joining us on tonight with Bruce Whitfield for a fascinating insight into the world of investment clubs, how to do it properly. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. Until then, good night.